Hello and welcome to the new episode of Free Science 365. Today's experiment is very simple, but it's very important. Simple because it needs almost nothing, but it's important because it teaches three important lessons to the child or student. First, empty is not empty. When when we see a glass which is empty or a bottle that's empty, uh, we think it's empty, but actually it's full to the brim. It's empty of any liquid, but it's full of air. The second thing that the child uh, learns today is Bernoulli's principle. Now, Bernoulli's principle is actually responsible for you know the airplanes going up in the sky uh, but this experiment shown in in a very simple way how it works and what is Bernoulli's principle uh, so without going into the mumbo jumbo scientific terms of uh, you know velocity of uh, fluid and uh, pressure differential uh, and Bernoulli's principle itself is a heavy word for children. So without uh, going into the scientific mumbo jumbo, you can teach them in the most basic form what Bernoulli's principle is. And the third thing that the child learns today uh, from today's experiment is what we call counterintuitive nature of science. Uh, because there will be a question before we do the experiment uh, as usual we'll stop the experiment and ask the pupil uh, the children the students what's going to happen and ultimately uh, the result is going to be counterintuitive and so the idea is that we inculcate this uh, this idea into the child's mind that Something sometimes things get into uh, you know uh, counterintuitive, uh, but that's okay. Uh, if you see or observe something that's counterintuitive, try to go into uh, the reason behind that instead of you know uh, not accepting it. So those are the three things that the child learns from today's experiment. First is that an empty container is not empty at all. Second. Bernoulli's principle and third that counterintuitive uh, less is okay okay so uh, without further ado let's get started okay as usual first let's have a look at things uh, we will be needing for this experiment so the first thing you need is an empty bottle, an empty bottle because it's not empty, of course. And the second thing you need is a tissue paper. Now this is a normal tissue paper uh, you have. But now there's another thing here, which is a proper, you know, thicker uh, sheet of paper. Why do we have it here? Because in some areas, in some places in the world. Uh, tissue paper is not uh, something that's easily available, you know, at home or uh, in the school. So we can also do this experiment using a normal paper sheet. Uh, what I will do is I will first do the experiment with the tissue paper and the bottle. And uh, after that, I will do the same experiment without the tissue paper and with the normal paper. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first, let's do the experiment with the empty bottle and <laughs> a tissue paper. Now, this is a small 500 milliliter soda water bottle. And so the mouth is smaller than a usual, you know, water bottle that you find in your fridge. And so for that reason, what we will do is to make uh, the experiment easier to do, 
what we'll do is we'll take the tissue paper and we will make uh, we'll, we will fold it like so in three uh, parts so now you have three parts of the tissue paper and just tear off one of the three parts you can do it with hands you can do it with a pair of scissors but here uh, you know for the ease of uh, for the purpose of ease let's do it with hands okay so this is not needed so let's uh, take it out of the video now this tissue paper what you do is you make you fold it like so and you know it's, uh, it's just or you can do it anyway all you need to do is put it in the mouth of the water uh, the bottle like this the challenge is to blow air into the mouth of the bottle and get this tissue paper inside the bottle very simple now the question that you should be asking before actually performing the experiment is where will the tissue paper end up in the bottle will it uh, go to the top of the bottle will it go to the uh, you know the bottom or rather say the the other side of the bottle or will it just shoot right into the bottom of the bottle that's the question and ask your friends students note down uh, their answers and then perform the experiment all right so let's do the experiment so i'm gonna blow air into the mouth of the bottle like so and let's see what happens to the tissue paper Look at that it actually came out of the mouth of the bottle isn't that amazing so uh, that's what you call counterintuitive isn't it uh, we were all expecting the, the the tissue paper to end up somewhere inside the bottle but it actually pops off uh, out so okay now let's do the same experiment but with a sheet of paper, a proper, you know, thick paper, not thin like a tissue paper. So all you need to do is tear it any way you want, you know, a small part of it. And we don't need this for now. So let's take it out of the video and make a small ball, like so. So you got a small ball of normal paper and you put it in the mouth of the bowl like so so this is in the mouth of the bowl and again uh, challenge the student or friend into uh, you know blowing the air into the mouth of the bottle and get uh, this paper bowl inside of the bowl so let's try ready Look at that! It flew out! Isn't that amazing? Uh, let's try another one. So, with the remaining paper, I just make another small ball. Uh, it can be a little bigger than this as well. Uh, and <laughs> okay, let's uh, put the ball in the mouth. Like so. Yeah. Here it is, and I'm gonna blow into the mouth. <laughs> Look at that! So it always comes out. A shred of paper will actually fly out instead of going in. And that was today's experiment. So what did we learn from today's experiment? As I said in the beginning of this video three things first this bottle is not empty it's actually full of air 
and it's so full of air that if you try to put in more air, try to you know pressure more air by blowing into it, uh, the air that's existing inside of it actually comes out. Very similar to when you have a glass full of water and you try to you know pour more water into it, uh, what happens? Well, the existing water will just spill uh, out of the glass. Similarly, the air also does the same thing. Uh, the only difference is water is visible to us, but air is not visible to us. But actually, uh, their nature is the same. Both of them are fluids. The second principle we learned is actually Bernoulli's principle. And uh, you can just tell the students that this is exactly the same principle on which airplanes can uh, go up in the sky, can fly, even though they are much heavier than air. And the third thing we learned is sometimes things go happen in the nature counterintuitively, and that's good. That's actually very, very good. Uh, and you should, instead of like denying what you see in front of you, you should actually go in, uh, go to library or uh, go on internet uh, and try to find, ask around, you know, talk to your teacher, talk with your friends and try to figure out why counterintuitive things happen. So that was today's experiment. Very simple, but very important. Thank you for watching. And as always, I uh, request you to kindly subscribe, uh, like, and comment, uh, and try to spread it as much as possible. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.